My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask, and we can grant you a moment of pleasure. Don't be shy. An intriguing pair. Takes me back to my youth. More than interested, if you feel the same. <laughs> what do you think, silly? Love, of course. Hot and vulgar with me. Or <laughs> sweet and sincere with my sister. Trust me, you don't want to miss my signature Mezzo Baranzan love trick. And is that your partner with you? What a gorgeous couple. Perhaps we could come to an agreement. We want both of you, silly, at the same time. This is all a bit much for me. Back home in Waterdeep, I prefer to have Tara leave the room before I undress. I might enjoy watching you tangled up with the drow, as long as I was five paces back. Perhaps you'd care for a little extra company. Well, I suppose it would do no good to back out now. Let us begin this little anthropological study if we must. Oh, I suspect we shall be more than merry. Charming. There must be a sprinkling shower of gold first. <laughs> <laughs> coin. Let's go. This is thrilling. Quite the merry little party we have assembled here. In Kuela's all custom from our home, groups of five or more meet quorum to qualify as orgies. Four or fewer are simply a gathering, legally speaking at least. Shall we? I hope you're not afraid of the dark, my darling. I must snuff out the lights before we begin. It's all part of the experience. The room is bathed in total darkness, so there is nothing to distract from your ecstasy. The lady, Nim, moves your hand to where the clasps of her blouse lie. As soon as you begin, you hear a zap of magic over from where Gail last was. With a scamper, he's gone from the room, and in his place is... Hello! I'm here on behalf of Gail of Waterdeep to participate in this evening's activities. He would like me to assure you all that I am anatomically accurate. Oh! An illusory wizard. <laughs> Pity. A magical surrogate is no equal to nature's true creation. Fear not. There are still many things we can do with you. I am involved. I'm taking notes. Making observations. Then I hope you are apt with shorthand, wizard. There will be much to observe. I'll enjoy myself well enough from back here. You go on and do the rutting, or what have you. As you enjoy yourself with the drow, the image of Gale tuts disapprovingly. But the orb in his naked chest glows with telltale excitement. Give me a moment, for pity's sake. You've exhausted me already. We recover quickly, but not that quickly. <sighs> Even in the best of times, it's an oasis of pleasure and calm. 
in the city's chaos. With Baldur's Gate preparing for war, the caress feels like the final flicker of a beautiful flame before darkness falls. Oakfather, preserve you. Indeed. Thank you for inviting me. I hadn't realized you considered me a worthy accomplice in such matters. I hope you'll keep me in mind in future. Our time with those two drow was certainly bracing. <laughs> Takes me back to some youthful misadventures in the Underdark. <laughs> Very much so. One positive I will concede about city life is that you never know what lies around the corner. It was a long time ago. I was a foolhardy young druid, intent on seeing the beauty of nature's unworldly fauna and subterranean glow for myself. Certain events transpired, and I found myself a guest of a noble drow house for a time. Well, something between guest, prisoner, and consort, perhaps. The house matron took an interest in me, and the patron also. They saw me as a novelty, perhaps. I was chained in their bedchamber for nigh on three years. It was not ideal. But not without its positives either. I did what was necessary to survive. And perhaps a few things that were less than necessary. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I feared for my life and wanted my freedom back, but I was willing to wait for my moment. And eventually it came. Lolth's noble houses are constantly at each other's throats. And eventually, some rivals of my hosts sought to unseat them. It was chaos, drow against drow, the clash of blades echoing throughout caverns, the feel of warm blood that I could not see. I took my chance and fled while all were distracted. I never looked back until I breathed fresh air again, and never learned what came of my hosts. Time can prove to be a trickster on one's recollections. What would be multiple lifetimes for others now separate me from my captivity. Perhaps I have lost perspective on what happened to me. Apologies, I meant no offense. I survived, and in years to come, I must have allowed hardships to become dwarfed by the shadow curse in my mind. I lost friends, confidants, and had the weight of responsibility bear down on me unrelentingly. There was scant opportunity for self-reflection. I am lucky to have your counsel. It was sorely needed. No, I shall not take you for granted, nor my own past. What is the point of long life if one does not make room for reflection? I've been unfair to you. I've had unrealistic expectations of your character ever since I joined you. But honestly, you've surpassed even those. Seems my faith was more than well-founded. 